This is Karen Hunter, and welcome to The Hub. Hey, this is Karen Hunter, and welcome to The Hub. And today, like, I'm doing something. Don't you worry about it. I, I don't know. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm joined by, like, these beautiful, I'm going to say black men. I don't oh. care if you're Native American, Puerto Rican. Uh, I don't know what you are. I got a lot of <laughs> I always get that. I, I always, get that. I always get that. It's okay. I'll be here for Harlem. Yeah, it's all okay. of that. <laughs> so let, me, let me welcome, let me welcome in Jossie Ross. Yes, let me welcome Big Indian the Jossie. Big Indian Jossie. We got Immortal Technique up in the joint. Peace, peace, peace. Uh, We got a guy I don't know. But Southpaw. I'm, I'm tech producer. Southpaw. Yeah. Southpaw. Yeah. 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 Okay, so you're, you're a left-handed so fighter? Lefty. Uh, yeah. At once upon a time, yes. Okay, and I can see. Occasionally, when, when necessary. <laughs> Still. So he's a producer with benefits because it's somebody for me. That's how it is. It does. Hey. I'm swift yeah. like that. Don't worry about it. And I'm not saying nothing. Not funny. that type of benefits. <laughs> producer yeah, with yeah, benefits. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah, like, we, if it's something break, right, if something <laughs> break off, you know, he's just. Just to clarify. Right, just to clarify. Just to clarify. <laughs> right. And, and um, the guy with the hair. Uh, the Me- guy Mecca. With the hair. Yeah, Mecca. Mecca. That's yes. his actual name. That's his Mecca. Mecca. He's that's done a lot of romantic show. novel covers. Yeah. I can see he's like the yeah. black yeah. Fabio. Right, right, right. right. Black, <laughs> the black, the black. Gotta have the fans. Go. <laughs> so it's no good without the fans. With the with the with the uh, locks lift though, with the wind because they look heavy. It's a heavy fan. It's gotta yeah, be. It's gotta be like fan. one of them industrial fans. It's like jet engine <laughs> style. Otherwise, it doesn't work. I'm I'm a Mortal Techniques PR. PR. Yes, for how long have you done this? Because he doesn't need PR. This is a man that needs no introduction. She coming for the job. Yeah. Like, yo, go get that nigga a job. He, he don't need you. you. Don't need <laughs> you, nigga. Oh, I love her. Two he don't call need her you. Payday and be like, yo, let her was remind you how man. much you know. You that two things to be true. Now about to be an unemployed. You're a beautiful black man with glitter on your cheek. You know that. There's no getting around that. There's no getting around that. Uh, What's up with the glitter, uh, though? I, I, I've, been here, I, I've been me a long time, Josh. See, things happen. <laughs> things happen. Oh, things happen on this side. It's a lot. What a lot happens. Happen. It's a lot happening. Okay. What? All right. So, so Mecca was breaking down because I, I'm, I'm struggling with today's music. You know, Immortal Technique is the name is important because your style and all the lyrics and oh, the, the genius behind what he does. Mm-hmm. I listen to today and it's soulless. Right. And I don't know what these kids are saying. And I feel like one of those, you know, hey, this generation, you know, but I just waving your cane. Yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. Get off my lawn. I feel mm-hmm. like one of those people. But you were you made you said something profound. So I said I had to put this on the mic. But there's there's two very specific reasons why uh, I, I argue against those trains of thought as far as um, I feel old. I feel like I'm out of touch. I feel this. I feel that. Number one, most of the arguments that we get when I when I have these discussions with people, they say, oh, man, you got to leave these kids alone. Our parents didn't like our music either. And I have to remind them our parents weren't listening to hip hop. Our parents were listening to a completely different music. We're the generation of hip hop. We grew up and we saw the best to do it, period. We saw when the culture, not the industry, but the culture was at its apex. And then the industry followed. So we've seen the top of the food chain. So we know regression when we hear it. Mm. We can tell when people are going backwards. Not all movement is progress. Mm. And we've seen a lot of movement with a lot of people who have severed the ties between grown folk and kids. And we haven't been able to teach them what it really is supposed to look like. So they think they're doing something revolutionary, pun intended. But meanwhile, they're regressing. They'll tell you stuff like, yo, nobody's ever done harmonies in hip hop the same way as Drake. And then those of us who are... What? Those of... (laughs) Those of us who are initiated, and these are artists who say that. PNB Rock actually said that on Twitter. And those of us who are initiated will sit there and go, no, Curtis Blow, Most Def, uh, you know. Houdini. One, Houdini. Like, we, we can, there's a, there's a laundry list, yeah. right? We can do that all day. We can sit there and tell you all day a bunch of artists who have already done that. So Both you're not doing harmony. anything new. And the, one of the reasons why we get so tight is because we grew up in an era of steady progress where somebody was always taking it a notch higher and the rewind factor was heavier mm. and you had to bring it back and hear what he said because that was crazy where Red Man just said something and Method Man just said something and Black Thought just said something and oh my God, what did he just, oh my God, what did Nas just say? Yo, did you hear? He rapped the whole thing backwards. Oh my God, somebody was always taking it up another notch. That's why we're, that's why we have a problem with the youngins now getting over to why there's so many of them and why right. this is so popular. What happened? Um, I have this theory, some long-standing theory, about how every successful MC today uh, is a direct descendant of a handful 
of of forefathers. Okay. Yeah. Those guys being, um, and this is just my personal list, but I think it, it goes across the board. There's Karis One. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who did it, he it, it all happened in the era where the the art actually started to excel, where it got out of the basement and you had to be nice, and the competition widened, and everybody was going for it. So there was there was uh, Karis One. There's LL Cool J. There's Rakim. There's Big Daddy Kane. There's Cool G Rap. There's Slick Rick. And uh, I said LL, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. This is where I started getting money. But okay. there's, there's like you there's gotta six, have a seven. Like, I hate six. I, it's an I, incomplete number. My my six would probably uh Scarface. Scarface. Along the lines Scarface. Of Ice okay. Cube. You said right. Big Daddy Kane, right? I yeah, he did. He did. He did. Okay. So yeah. my my theory has always been: whenever you see a super successful MC today, he is a descendant of the original seven. And the more he has of each one of them the better he is. So if you have the storytelling of Lil Wayne, the the machismo of LL Cool J, the gangster rap of The storytelling of, of Slick Rick. Car- oh, Slick, Slick Rick. Rick. Okay. I, I meant to say Slick Rick. Storytelling of Slick Rick, the, the machismo of uh, uh, the smoothness of Big Daddy Kane, the lyricism of Rakim, the revolutionary tendencies of KRS-One, the more you can add a piece of all of those into your game, the bigger you're going to be. So whereas Nas is the direct son of Rakim and then the flair of Kane and then he can tell a gangster story like G-Rap but then he can turn the ladies on like LL where you have the more the more pieces they have the so better Kendrick, they are Kendrick Kendrick would be in my approximation he's a direct son of Karis one Rakim with the uh, with 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 a uh, uh, he's got a sprinkle of of Kara, uh, I say Karis right yep. yeah. he's got a sprinkle of Cool G the way he can tell a, a gangster story the way he can get into the, the streets and and really tell the truth but also because G-Rap and Percy P were the first MCs to really um, solidify multi-syllabic uh, right. lyricism. Right, Mul- multi-syllabic, so, right. So, so multi-syllabic it's like, there's, there's a bunch of different aspects you can take comes from, them. from so, all these guys. So, so getting, Immortal, who, who are you a descendant of? Oh, that's I can one. answer that. I mean, I, sure, I'm sure you could. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm it's one of the reasons I, why I decided I, to start I, working be, with you. Uh, I'll be honest with you, um, I had the benefit of growing up around a lot of the people that um, I grew to really respect. In other words, it, it was like being, it was like being a kid, like a water boy at Mount Olympus. You know what I mean? You got to see the mm. gods. You know what I mean? You got to see the gods play with one another. So as a kid, there was a block party on uh, on one twenty fourth. Uh, between LaSalle and uh, Amsterdam. And I remember they blocked the whole thing off so all the grant projects was out and randomly KRS-One just showed up and just started rocking the party. And I was like, I thought that was amazing how someone could just come off the bench like that. And then uh, I saw Rakim perform and his cadence was just like him on the record. And I, mm-hmm. I was like, no, no, it has to be them playing the record. It can't be his voice. It can't be him doing it perfectly. The enunciation, the nuance in the rap. And then I toured with Rakim and I was like, no. That's wow. where I got. Wow. So I would say that uh, I definitely was the most influenced in my career, obviously, by Ra, by Chris, and then of course the story writing element, of course Slick Rick. But I mean, I think there were definitely other people within that vein of me coming up in the golden era that told stories that I think are important to hear. There's one by they were called they were a Christian rap group. Um, they were called the Boogie Monsters. They was from down I south. I remember them. But they had one... Recognized threshold. Yeah. 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 From down yeah. south, I believe. And they had one crazy story called Old Man yeah. Old Jacob's, Man Jacob's Well. well. Mm-hmm. Which was yeah. a terrifying story. I tell you right now, if you were a little kid, if you were grown up and you Old were feeling like a little a rapist. kid... A rapist and a murderer, like a sicko who kidnapping children. I was crazy. I forgot well. about that song. And, and, and yeah. the crazy thing is this. As an adult, do me a favor. If you if you think you're so tough, turn the lights on and play Old Man Jacob's Well. You're going to feel a certain little kind Old of way. Jacob's you're well. going to be like, Old Man Jacob's what is well. wrong with 13 these souls people? dwell in, in Old, Old Man Jacob's, Jacob's Well. So I'm saying yeah. a, lot, a lot of different stories well. Uh, and also, I think one thing I also learned uh, is not just the lyricism factor, but I saw the way some of the more... Uh, uh, I won't say successful, but I'll say the people who transcended eras. I saw the way they treated people. 
And I feel like that has a lot to do with how their su success is seen and kind of ingested by other individuals around them. Tell me, for example. Because I, I, I've seen people that they they not half as successful. They don't have half the flair or the fame as some of these people. And they really act like they're better than everybody. And then I've seen people who are legendary, like legend, like... You know what I mean? Like a Grandmaster Cast, like a Rock Him, be able to just listen to some kid rap who came up to them. And I just realized, wow, that's why he's the God MC. And these people are just like a pretender, like a foe, like pretending like, oh, yeah, I'm the, I'm the best. And it's just like, no, you, you're not the best. You, you're, you just hold, you're a placeholder. You're a seat mm. filler. See, because you know there's I mean? a difference between industrial and cultural. Right. What does that mean, Mecca? There is, there are plenty of people who get down as far as the industry is concerned. There are plenty of people who are industry savvy. They do all the right political things. They they shake the right hands. They kiss the right babies. They pay the right people. As as a PR and as a guy who was the music editor of the source for a bunch of years, um, I've seen them all come and go. I've seen politically correct people, but then there are people who are cultural. And once you get past the industry, on the under on the other side of that, there are a lot of cultural people who are waiting to see if you're really about this life when you say boogie monsters will you know who we're talking about right in right. this room right now i can say i got you stuck off the realness and everybody in here in their heads just finished that line but that's a cultural thing i can play pictionary with my homeboy and just say rap lines and we'll 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 sweep up because we know what we're talking about uh, karen yeah. I, I, let me add Johnson. two names possible names okay. to that to that to list the to the to the progenitors right the forefathers mm -hmm. um one is Melly Mel. Melly Mel. Oh, yes. One generation prior. Okay, but yes. still the progenitor to I never storytelling. I never. I never. I never. Let me get the other one out first. Shoot, shoot. Tila Rock. Okay. Ooh. Now, see, you're you're in the you're okay. in the same vein. Here, here's here's how this happens. It's actually tiers, right? You just named tier one. Yeah. I'm closer to tier two. Yeah. And then jay z biggie Nas would be tier three okay right now we're on like tier five okay i think just to his point for example like a person like a spoonie g would mm. be the Ooh. tier that ll and then people took like from. uh mm -hmm. took like, from. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm naming i'm naming my seven kane right borrowed some from spoonie from spoonie g. g i'm naming my seven at a very specific date and time these are the guys who when they came to the forefront this is when that we like i said we got out of the basement right yeah. and, and they is, already commercial I, commercial successes which is why i label them yeah. the most influential mcs that's then it's not they didn't make the most influential song they didn't have the most influential record but these seven together kind of shaped where we are now so now I, like i said we're on like tier five and the problem is it's like carbon copies each nobody's like, creating yeah. like no no follow me here jay-z begat kanye right absolutely kanye begat Trey cuddy and Drake. Yes. Right? So you see you see the connection. Yeah. <laughs> those guys this is biblical. Yeah, it, it gets it gets <laughs> No, there. it's true though. There's a bloodline there. Th th it gets there. So there are a bunch of people who you can find little Wayne's influence in. You can find their DNA in him as far as like his ability to tell a story, his ability to get lyrical, his ability to take a shirt off and really perform, his ability <laughs> to be a sex symbol. All these things sex that Yes, yes. I mean, Somehow. Yes. Like Jamie uh, Foxx, the way we were oh, talking about. Yes. Well, Jedi mind know. trick. So, <laughs> so I, I, no, we were talking. Uh, what, what was the theory? Like, oh, so you, you I was coming in. I, I said, and I she was, was singing. singing. She was singing. And he said, oh, you can hold the tune. I said, I'm black. You know, we get we either can <laughs> sing, dance, and you you said play, play, Boy, play sport. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. we, we get something. We don't get everything. And you you mentioned somebody like Jamie Foxx. I said, Jamie Foxx kind of got a little bit of everything. I said, yeah, but he's facially challenged. You know, so you don't get everything, right? So that. But I women mean, overlooked that, that. Was that wrong? I mean, I women know. overlooked. What? what back to the original know. point. Okay, move on. The problem is, as as each generation begat another one, as somebody else got an, more DNA and more DNA and more DNA, when you got to Little Wayne, the nut got weaker. <laughs> Yo, all right, Josh. I mean, but oh, uh, no, good night, no. everybody. Uh -huh. hey, thank you, thank you very much. It was great to be here at the show. Uh, not weaker. I'm never coming back here. <laughs> You're always invited back in more not, technique. Not weaker. I won't bring no weak nut. <laughs> Like most nuts would be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah. Someone, yeah. Else. Someone yeah. else. Come on. No, Somebody's no, got to. No, no, no. I'm not so. touching your nuts. Go <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there we go. You see what I mean? And we're back. Yeah.
<laughs> and we're back. And we're back. And yes. We're back. Um, <laughs> no, not weaker in a sense because Lil Wayne was one of the most one of the biggest artists there was. Understood, right? but it's Super a derivative famous. of a derivative. But it, no, no, no. That's but that's not how it works. What happened is they took directly from him. Okay. But they not everybody takes everything. Everybody leaves something out. Nobody is an exact Rock him clone. Nobody is an exact Big Daddy Kane clone. So nobody's an exact Little Wayne clone. But and I can tell you this from being the music editor over at the Source. My biggest problem was whenever somebody who was trash blew up, I had to get ready for the backlash. The backlash would be the thousands and thousands of kids that that guy influenced. Right. Give me an example of the trash that blew up. Uh, what was the what was the Dominican brother's name that Angie Martinez brought out that sounded exactly like Jay Z? Sicaro. Sicaro. Sicario. Like that. Yeah. Sicario. Sicario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sounded exactly yeah, but like. He didn't blow but, up. Give me a trash. I also didn't consider exactly him trash. Like him. Okay. Okay. Trash that blew up. The problem. The problem as far as hip hop is concerned is if it makes money, it works. All right, it's Cardi B. Trash that blew up. Mm, no. No. She just a science experiment. Come I, on. No, no, you want you want <laughs> trash, you want trash, you want trash that blew up. Look at me, look at me. You want trash that blew up. Okay, Mecca, Soldier Boy. Okay, I I concur. Fantastic. When Soldier yes. Boy, when Soldier Boy blew up at my desk, I was <laughs> pissed off. And everybody said, "No, dude, he's not serious. Look at him. He's he's only oh, he's joking. A, he's a brand. He's not serious." Again, Cardi, well, he they, did no, it because that was opinion. YouTube's no, fault, right? What, what everybody told me was, "Why are you paying him so much attention? He's not serious. They're gonna laugh at him. They're gonna get him out of here." We're all just, "Hey, hey, look, Little B just came out. We're going to the show." I was like, "Why are you doing that?" No, no, no. Fuck. We're gonna go to the show. We're gonna laugh. It's funny. Why are you taking it so serious? I was the only person sitting at the desk who got over the next couple of months hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of emails a day from people who were now being like that yeah, yeah. it's never the guy in front that i'm so worried it's about like you just it's the ocean of people right. that you know, he influenced you know, so it's like trump because people so, are like similar. oh he's not serious he can't be president it, it was kind of just, just like that and then before you except know it, for let me let me tell you the difference there i don't mean to interrupt you tech no, but no, no. but here's the thing trump is a symptom of everybody else he he's he's not imitating. He's nobody see. He's imitating life. He's the common. De he's the lowest common denominator. Here's That's the right. C student appealing to all the C students. Whereas which is most people. Whereas with with this art, once they see it's successful, right, they're going to be the one that influences the rest of life. Okay. That with, with that said, when Little Wayne came out, and we all watched him run the two thousands. Crazy. Without question. Crazy. Without question. Top of the food chain ran the 2000s. He had a full generation come up behind him. Mm -hmm. The problem is, Lil Wayne is kind of a genius. He's, Most he's, people are not. He's amazing. Yeah. So they took from him what they could. But they couldn't replicate or duplicate it because they didn't have. They couldn't it. They get his talent, the, right. But they got everything else. So the swag. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we'll, I'm gonna get, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna get a my... double cup. I'm gonna get a double cup. I'm right. gonna fill it with drugs. I'm gonna right. take tons of drugs and be proud of it. I'm gonna dress like this. I'm gonna slur my words. I'm gonna tattoo my face. I'm gonna get a bunch of colors in my hair. I'm looking at Little Wayne's children, and the reason why we have a problem with them is because they're all drug babies. They're all crack babies. These, this is the first generation that I'm seeing of legit crack babies. If DMX influenced you to rob somebody and Jay-Z influenced you to go get rich and Kane influenced you to go get a bunch of girls, what did Lil Wayne influence you to do? Mm. You couldn't rhyme like him, so you had to do everything else, which was drugs, which was brag about money, which was tattoo your face, which was get colors in your hair, and they're all we're looking at drug addicted children and they're selling records though but so but, here's the thing right because music is so spiritual to me right? to you to me right because it you know what let me just go ahead immortal please continue what you're saying i just wanted to make one slight correction they're not selling records they're streaming records Okay, Big so make, in make the, the distinction. Huge, huge in, in, in so makes it, please, let me ed educate us because no, 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 you know, no. all I see is the billboards and the, right, you right, know, right. the numbers. That, and those are based off different numbers now. That used to be based off of what? Strictly album sales. Strictly album sales. Now it's into the range of streaming services. So this is where it gets tricky because it's hard to tell which one of these are legitimate servers or not. In, in many ways, I remember when websites went off of clicks, they used to have a room full of a dozen people and all they would do is press control R, control R, control R to refresh the, the screen. And it looked like that website was getting mm. thousands and thousands mm -hmm. of clicks. Now you don't have to buy millions of records to ensure that your artist is on top. You just have to make sure enough people click that link 
just hear, to hear the music for free so everything goes into a certain amount of promotion for the record so that people then play it for free in the same way that terrestrial radio's big issue was not the music they were playing it was the fact that the only reason they wanted people to listen to it is because that's how they sold stuff on there if they could change the format and make it a sports station they didn't care they were like no nigga we're here to make money we're not right, here for your right, stupid culture right. we don't care about that and i think that's the thing about mm. our society that we pretend we're not here for fairness we grew up in an imperial colonial society that then metamorphosized into whatever we have they've never been about fairness they're about dominance they're about we, control okay we respect and we look up to dominance and control as much as that has been the nail in our own coffin as people all right immortal mecca jossie um sp south south Paul. Paul. South Paul. South Paul. i'm not gonna the remember boxer. that I sp sexy okay then we do <laughs> we keep that all right okay I, she'll I, be alone I, in calling I, you that I, in this room i can do that this is my no. this is Thank my you. space facts. here i can do that you know <laughs> I, I sit here and i like i have this this vision of like how do we, we we were just having this conversation about our leaders right i had this conversation over lunch and i said you know we had martin medgar you know i can go down the list malcolm uh it was fanny lou hamer it was you know shirley chisholm people right. who are really about something ella baker whom you may not know but yeah. folks that were yeah, oh, yeah. But, but if you know about works right so and they put their lives on the line literally a lot of them mm -hmm. lost it because they had a vision for it. fred hampton a vision for what could happen right in the world if we come together together around a thing but out of that since we're doing that begat thing mm -hmm. came a generation of people who just wanted attention mm -hmm. so somebody may smear blood on their shirt mm -hmm. and walk around with that for two days because they want to show that i'm the heir apparent somebody else you know may have rhymes and put mm -hmm. a perm in their hair and stand up and you know do this whole sun raider thing for, you know I'm, I'm referencing some literature but you know you you see now a generation of leaders who only want to be seen and aren't actually doing the work so they they don't they don't have any jeopardy of losing mm. their lives at all there's no jeopardy right mm -hmm. so so now we're leaderless and i don't know you know because I, I think it runs parallel with the music as well there's there's you know there's you but then like remember, how do we get to another place remember remember what i said as far as the music was concerned in the, in the music industry, if it made money, then it automatically worked. The problem is that when it came to the leaders, money. a lot of these generations never saw it work. They don't know where we started from, so they have no idea how far we've come. It doesn't look like it worked. It looked like somebody if you asked us them, out right. or, or, or you died for nothing. Right. You, you took all those bricks in the head for nothing. Look right. how, can I curse here? Yeah, of course. Okay, oh, yeah. check it. Do you look how look how fucked up we are now. What what did you do? You got shot in the head for what? You you got you got hit in the head. All they ever show us is civil rights footage. You caught bottles in the head, you caught fire hoses, you got dogs sicked on you, and here we are getting shot up by cops, nobody does nothing. The shit you do don't work. So somebody it, it's it's got to be effective. It's for lack of a better term, to use a marketing term, it's not sexy. Being a leader is not sexy. It don't get you no women, it don't get you no money. It doesn't get you any it, all there is is attention how do we what do we do to change that because i you know i think we have an opportunity right now even with this marketplace where they're streaming bull crap and they're making up numbers it's almost like a free market right mm -hmm. and you guys travel a lot right so africa's doing some some really interesting things i'm looking at ethiopia right now the, the president of ethiopia doing some really progressive things in rwanda and they're open you know there, there's some movement in in ghana there's movement right and here there, there appears to be some movement among some of us right mm -hmm. how do we put it all together because back in the day music moved with the social you know like you you had sister soldier who was culture right with the krs ones mm -hmm. and the and the where does where does public enemy where's chuck d and them fall that into that's a that's a group so okay. I, I was always okay. doing it like right. as a right. solo, solo things but as far as groups there's definitely an echelon there i just never i never okay. we didn't talk about that the, the problem is that anytime anything generates money it's always going to find people who are going to be derivative to generate more money using exactly that same formula so for example when public enemy when de la soul 1989 right that was that was a seminal year for hip-hop yes and it was a seminal year for revolutionary hip-hop holy intellect you had uh um you know boogie down productions by any means necessary you had poor public righteous enemy, teachers. Poor, yeah, yeah poor righteous teachers you had amazing product that was coming out but the problem was that we can commodify this oh, okay this is trendy and then once it starts being commodified by artists because the artists believe in that at some point too they have to make money they have to generate you have to produce unless you're completely independent and so 
if they're dependent upon that imagery, when that imagery stops being sexy, as you you know pointed to Southpaw and as the word that Mech used, um, I, you said he was sexy too, right? No, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, but but, but, so but, you, but you but you but you stop you stop doing that once you stop doing that um, and, and you become reliant upon that imagery, it becomes imagery, and that means imagery can change as the trends change. And so the quickest way to co-opt the revolution is by co-opting is by making it something that's you know, that produces revenue. And, and unfortunately, like Kendrick Lamar, he makes, uh, to me, pretty intelligent music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I couldn't see his music as revolutionary because at some point he's going to be uh, faced with a really, really tough decision of either, you know, when it stops being trendy, are you going to change that aesthetic right. and make right. what's popular? it's trendy now. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's trendy to be an activist. Well, right. Being woke, quote right. unquote, right. woke is trendy shoe. right now. A yeah. But surprise. It, it, still, it still gets, there's still a certain there's still a good backlash to it like because you don't you you can be you can be woke but you don't want to be a whole tap nigga they'll shit on you if you're a whole tap nigga if you if you start acting like a whole but i think that's because a lot of that stuff is isn't really the question of woke it's the image of woke again it's imagery mm -hmm. yeah. Listen, right, having, right. Well, having, sand, having board, sandals facts. and smelling a certain way look <laughs> let me tell you something i know a lot of those hotel people so-called hotel people from harlem some of them actually know a lot about history and i mm -hmm. think that they're lost in the mix with a lot of people it's gotten a bad reputation just, right, bad market just out there and i think that's because nobody has fact checked the situation but to go back to that those hotel people are really the children of the malcolm x's right mm -hmm. of the of the medgar evers of all those people mm -hmm. that came up before them i think the difference is this that they we really the, studied the dictionary we, we, <laughs> but we but we but to bring to bring the conversation hold back to here we as a hip hop generation are not the civil rights generation. We are the children of the children of the civil rights generation, which means we're the children of the Black Panther generation. Now let's be very clear, the Black Panther generation, and I think this point was made by other MCs, was different than the civil rights generation. The civil rights generation says, we wanna be part of America. We bled in this country, we fought in these wars. Da -da -da -da. Please let us be part of America. We'll do whatever it takes to be part of it. And the Black Panther generation was like, you know what? I'm not like my mom and my dad. I don't give a fuck if you want me to be part of this country. Bitch, you need me to be part of this country. You need me to fight your wars. You need me to be this person who adds artistry and all these things to your bland, fucked up society. So you know what? I'm not going to allow you to treat me like that before. And the very difference between how we got along with the industry is definitively reflective in a microcosm of how we dealt with the civil rights generation after the civil rights movement over. And we talked about this at NPR mm -hmm. where were the color line the color lines were crossed where were where were the class lines because after everything was over all those prominent rich black people went back to their fancy churches and looked down their noses at a bunch of broke niggas that oh I'm not gonna deal with y'all how many of y'all went back to the community how many of y'all that were criticizing rap in the 80s and 90s would go to the community and say no we, right. we're, we're gonna have a different and I always say and I make the point again and again I don't agree with everything that Farrakhan does but his approach to coming to Harlem I remember was very different than other people's he came and sat down in a big room of people was mostly kids and he said you know what i can't tell you guys how to rap but i'll tell you that you have to understand what you're saying mm -hmm. and the first person to ever call a black woman a bitch was not uh, a another rapper it was a white slave master and that's because her children were not considered people when she had she children, was considered they, a dog she, she yeah. said she kids had a litter, a litter yeah. of pups and yeah. whenever she had children they would say she had one in the litter and then however it would be compounded in that way so his point was just to say think about whose language you're using and i think that that point meant a lot because as a teacher is different than being a, a champion a warrior no right? doubt you could so be the greatest resonate, champion though? and the warrior in the world, but if you're not the greatest teacher, then you can't teach anybody how to be a warrior. You're just a great warrior, but no great warriors come after you because you're not a good teacher and you do okay. not know how to raise warriors. It's a difference between being a warrior and raising warriors. You're a warrior for then and now, but if you raise warriors, what you're doing is you're raising a future generation and you're thinking about the people that come after you. And the question I think for hip hop was, 
when did the older generation literally take the time and maybe that's why my attitude towards this new generation is different i'm much more willing to have a conversation right. than to write them off but that's because i teach in a prison and because i see people who have the utmost of their talent just probably flush down a toilet because there's no belief in themselves the people that have been victims of all kinds of abuse and that through all that found it also right. one last point the middle passage which is the horrific occurrence of transferring a free person into a slave uh, has a lot to do with the indigenous holocaust and all other indigenous holocausts in this respect going far back as to the hebrews uh being destroyed in babylon and their temple being smashed and that is that all oppressors destroy the musical instruments of the people that they wish to replace and i think me and jossie could sit here and talk about from north america to south america for those first two three hundred years of the conquest of the quote-unquote new world tens of thousands of instruments were destroyed and the same is exactly true about the middle passage and african people you're not a quote-unquote musical people no this was stolen from your culture and destroyed and what we as a people are doing is trying to reclaim that in some way shape or form trying to grasp at those sounds at those rhythms at those melodies that we lost from back in the day who's to say that those pop charted rap tunes that brothers and sisters come up with aren't the same melody that we mm. were playing seven eight hundred years ago there's nothing new under the sun right right, right. so so why isn't that resonating you know as you talk about farrakhan I, you know who's from chicago who mm. lives in chicago <laughs> I, I wonder you know and chicago gets a lot of uh attention uh oh, yeah. mo some of us propagandized you know uh, mm -hmm. trying right. to demonize it but some of it is like why why is there violence if 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 you have such a powerful teacher why here's, isn't it resonating why isn't the here, lesson here's the other thing that i was going to say a lot of warriors no teachers for the warriors so it's not that you don't have warriors right the second generation has a lot, a lot of warriors in chicago there's just no people with a purpose right or what you have is that warriors have breeded soldiers and there's a difference between a soldier and a warrior. A soldier takes orders and does what he needs to do, which is what you have a lot of in Chicago. But the difference in, in Harlem and in mm -hmm. Brownsville, yeah. war was, soldiers everywhere. But the difference is a warrior knows why he fights. A warrior asks questions about what is the purpose of his fighting and what will be the future of his people. It's not just the fight. It's not just the battle. It's the war. And what I'm saying is that the OGs who are not present either because they're in prison or somewhere else or people's fathers nobody in a sense was there to not just give these kids quote unquote game or lessons but to educate them to the revolutionary philosophy that this was never made for you brother do you understand that you are a lego piece trying to fit into a place that was not made for you you have to get to a square that's not on the chessboard to where, win where is that square immortal where, I is, think, where I, is it? I think part of it comes in acknowledging that history that we've lost, but also knowing that we can't recreate it in its exact way, right? We uh, uh, the the whole idea of simply abandoning abandoning modernity on a whole and going back to you know uh, 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 birth rates that are less than fifty percent, abandoning mm -hmm. modern medicine. No, that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is the soul and the image of our people, which is who we still are, as much as they've tried to beat, rape, and torture that out of us, it's still there. And without acknowledging it and without accepting not not that that gift, but that kind of cursed responsibility mm. i'm sitting in a room full of brilliant men right and i'm honored first of all let me just say that um as are we no as you know but, facts but i've been having this conversation for a minute because I, I a couple of weeks ago maybe a month ago i spoke with this <laughs> um african billionaire he's putting together a fund and he said that black americans are the most equipped to take advantage of the resources and the and all of the opportunities that are now burgeoning in Africa. Hmm. And he said, because of the 400 years of not, and this is a black an African from the Cameroon who came here and studied black history. Hmm. And, and I thought about it and I said, you know, even the African, when you look at Nigerian television, it's awful. 
Mm-hmm. Anybody, have you seen any Nigerian movies out of Nollywood? No. P- Google nah, search. Like Google the, search. We talk, we've been talking it's about the whole tears and whatnot. And it's like the, it's it's the baby of Bollywood, which is the baby horrible. of Hollywood. And it's, it's terrible. It's horrible. But it's, it's laughably It is terrible. funny as hell, but it's like so badly done. It's, it doesn't even make any sense, right. right? And because Africa's been divvied up, you have people emulating colonized behavior, right? So there's like mm-hmm. a lot of corruption and a lot of crazy stuff. Right. You look at, you know, Europeans, right? But black Americans had to come here. We brought rice. We had to figure out how to make chitlins, something nasty, into something delicious. You know, right. the, the the drums and everything that they forbade us to, to use, we had to figure out other ways. We used our mouths. We used other things to, to use the same drum beats to deliver messages. We had to switch code switch. We had to we had Still. to we had to smile and shuck and jive and sing while we were in pain and so all of that for four hundred years has developed in a, a people that not just adaptable but create creatively mm-hmm. there's no other being it's why we run jump play sing but but that also goes into technology it also goes into intellectual pro- uh, prowess that we don't even talk about but that manifest in a way that no other group has that as mm-hmm. part of their DNA and I think you know and I'm not saying that we're better than them but I'm saying that natural selection of Darwin is true then why aren't we doing more you know and what is it going to take for people to wake up to understand how powerful and wonderful we are like I that's but my that's challenge a, that's every a day. two-part question why aren't we doing more and what yeah. is it going to okay. take for people so let's to start? do let's yeah. deal with the why aren't we doing the more why Mecca? is probably easier than the what because it's because it's not it's again this sucks bad marketing it's not sexy people haven't seen it work yet people do what they think works people have seen michael jordan get rich coming from nowhere playing basketball kobe bryant lebron james people have seen jay-z start by selling drugs turn into a music mogul almost a billionaire those are examples of things that work. Black Wall Street, Rosewood, we don't Eatonville. see we don't see it. Those are, we, those are, because, okay. because those are those are those are like and I know, I know, but that's because somebody I trusted sat me down and told me, and it didn't sound like an old war story. It sounded more like a blueprint. It sounded more like yo, this can totally happen right With regular now. Regular people, if you do it right. the right way. But until then, it's a story you're blowing dust off of and telling me this why. Because I live, if I'm 19, 20, 25, the kids we're talking about, I live in the era of 140 characters. I don't want to sit and hear you tell me about something I've never seen before. You are wilding. Unless this it makes, is not unless it changes their life. Uh, right? Unless, but you got to show me, Playboy. Right. You like, can't where, just say that. Where's the Instagram? The show it's me. More, I need to see it. Especially it, more, increasingly every Year by year, with with the advent because of social Instagram media, Instagram only to shows pr- the highlights. Pixar, right. It didn't happen. It's like, it only, it's, it only like shows the highlights. Everything is filled. Exactly. Exactly. I, I have I have maybe five thousand some odd followers. Right, not a lot. Not in relatively speaking, not a lot. Um, yeah, not people, a mortal technique numbers. No, no, oh, way, no way. Close. <laughs> oh, people will hit me up on a on a regular basis when they see the photos that I post. Talk. I've got questions in my dms right now from everything from can you manage me can i work with you can you introduce me to such and such these and then one of my own clients she was like what are you doing today i said i gotta write i gotta do this i gotta do this and then i go do this and she goes to me must be nice i was like what do you mean to be able to set your own schedule like that like just you ain't gotta listen to nobody must be nice i was like that's really what you think. <laughs> and then I couldn't get mad at her because I realized that's all I show you. Yeah, I right. don't show you when right. I have writer's block. I don't right. show you when right. the deposit is late, when the money didn't show up, when or, when or that I'm for a bracelet was um giving you problens. Uh, again, <laughs> Thanos or it didn't everybody, happen, everybody. <laughs> Thanos. <laughs> Nobody, nobody ever. We don't show anybody the low lights. Is that and the I, ember from Jurassic Park? No, that's Thanos. He done collected all of the um, crystals. Like, uh, so we're gonna go. We're gonna turn to dust. He's gonna get shout the out. Shout out to uh, Stone and Shadow dust. custom made jewelry. Stone and Shadow. Everybody go check her out. Stone right, and Shadow. You know, uh, real quick, Ken, Karen. You you asked. You know when? What can we expect more from people? And I think part of it is because capitalism and American exceptionalism has done such a remarkable job of showing those Jay-Z's and showing those Michael Jordans and selling those stories that we take this completely a mathematical approach to yes. success. Mm-hmm. Yes. We're like, we're going to be that one out of a billion that like somehow I'm going right. to go to jail just so I can show you that I can make it when I get out of jail. Like, exactly. What? <laughs> what are you talking <laughs> about, nigga? No, that doesn't that's work. A, that's, a, that's a thought? <laughs> what? Hell yeah. 
Absolutely. I'm going to get shot. Check this out. Self-inflicted problems. Self-inflicted problems just to make their way out. People get their homies to shoot them so that they can have a story like 50 Cent. Kids with good parents in the house will go out and sell drugs just so they can say their life was real. Just to speak on that, I've had artists come to me and tell me, my label is telling me, and this was maybe as 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 early as what five years ago the last time maybe three years ago someone came up to me and they were like yo do you believe this these niggas told me and i'm not gonna tell this person's name i'm not gonna say the label because i have to have their permission to tell the story i i'm not i'm not a gossip like that but it this is important that it speaks to the point that i was like yo are you serious and they were like yeah the dude suggested that i take like a flesh wound it'll get my name <laughs> in the paper flesh, and i was like you know what it brought up in my mind the sopranos the Sopranos had an episode oh, yeah, like that yeah. oh, with yeah. Tretch and they shot the nigga in the ass. And I was just like, what is going on? It's, the next time I hear about someone getting shot in the ass, is this what's going to happen? Like, dude, people are really getting shot. And y'all are thinking- They have a choice some, in it. This is some movie <laughs> shit. <laughs> right. Right. You're thinking it's some movie <laughs> shit. When I first saw a movie, I saw Rambo. We got shot in the arm and I, he kept fighting. I, I had to look back at that as a kid and then be like- Nah, you can't do that. Right. When you get shot, your whole arm goes white. You lose the motion in this part of your body. Why do you, you know you this? You go stiff. You, Cause you know what I mean. You did your own crazy. Welcome shit. to Harlem. <laughs> so I'm saying you gonna bleed if they don't uh, if they don't cauterize the wound. That tiny little hole in your body could kill you in ten minutes. You could literally bleed out in less than ten minutes unless you take some from the car, pump it in. Psst, pop that off you actually you, know what I mean? you sound like some some experience has been i mean look i lived a wild life as a kid <laughs> i think what i'm trying to say though is that um to 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 that particular point i think that <sighs> it doesn't get digested and maybe it, it doesn't get taken seriously because people don't feel a connection to their ancestors they don't realize that they're still watching them there it's almost as if you know what paul mooney told this joke about african americans and africans and he said he said you know fuck y'all and he was like huh he's like yeah i don't like africans and everyone was like what are you talking about paul and he goes you know why because you never came for us <laughs> yes, he goes any man. other people y'all would have declared war on us but right. then you show up 500 years later with a suitcase full of watches nigga. And I was like, oh, <laughs> but, but at the same time that resentment i think is always there for our culture as a people of color saying yes we had all these pyramids but what about when the pyramid glory days were over and that ties in what he brought up about black wall street i remember southpaw's father used to bring us to these little like gatherings in harlem with like black and brown children we watch a movie and then discuss it afterwards mm -hmm. so one day we really? watched um we watched rosewood or mm -hmm. one of the movies yeah, 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 and yeah. they were like well what's wrong with this or what what's going on and everybody was raising their hand and i always remember me and another kid raised our hand and we was like well where's the protection they had all these things why wouldn't they hire like white soldiers people that they work for them but legitimately were there where's the you couldn't imagine factor? that you would be killed just for being successful how could you not imagine who, who that wouldn't back imagine then? that you, you're building your See, living your life no, it's, 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 it's that, 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 dream right that that's right the line no but that's especially given our history already but that, but that, but on this if land, you don't expect like, that you're naive. Okay. Right. You're a historical. No, 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 but that's not the, no, that's the point. But that is the point. Exactly. But those people became that way because I feel they went through second generation immigrant syndrome, which is like where you get Latinos who support Trump and these idiots who don't realize all the things that these people suffered that you're criticizing are the same things that you, and matter of fact, the same things that all these white people have been through by the coming Irish, here illegally. The, the, the Italians, Absolutely. the Jews. Eastern German yeah. people. Yes. All, all these things I'm saying is that bringing it back to that specific point that without it being a part of our lineage and a part of the open air discussion when we look back and we are resentful of that because of the situation we're in we have to acknowledge what i think you said earlier too that not all movement is progress that mm. we that we are at a stage now that's not necessarily part of our history. And I'll quote the great historian John Henry Clark that says that slavery isn't our history, but rather slavery interrupted 
our history, yes, sir. our 200,000 years of human history that began in Africa where European uh, hominids didn't show up as Homo sapiens sapien until, what, 10, 20,000 years ago. Mm. So we, Why do you know this immortal technique? No, I, I'm I'll be at home studying. No, but <laughs> seriously, Yo, seriously. You should see you his know. wall of books. It's, no, I I can, no, no Yo, but you know what? Yeah. Yeah. There, kind of there are people listening right now who consider themselves very learned and don't know what you know. Listen, it's, it's only because I had the benefit of not just having like my father who was a soldier and kind of raised me on some survival he was a warrior shit. probably not a soldier but mm. he was a scientist and my father was a good teacher and i think that's the point you could be a great warrior a great lawyer that doesn't mean you're going to raise great lawyers you could be a great doctor that doesn't mean all your kids are going to be great doctors so the kid who's going to make your son a great doctor is his teacher are you his master teacher are you going to stop and kick all your patients the fuck out take five years off to train your son to be a better doctor than you no then your doctors your son will not be a better doctor than you because i think the point is that when we discuss children and parenting and the tumultuous relationship that we as brown and black people have had with our parents because in many ways we've normalized the abuse that they've gotten and said that's real that's not real mm -hmm. them beating mm -hmm. us as kids ain't real no. them getting beaten until they couldn't walk that wasn't real that was something that they did so that they wouldn't get whipped by a slave master that was some interesting fucked so up thing that happened submission. Right, right so, so that you would not would get submit. whipped and would not have marks on you so you wouldn't be sold away from the family that was something they learned because their parents were abusive because they lived in a patriarchal household where you know marital rape wasn't even on the books until 1970 something so what what are we actually dealing with we're dealing with those dysfunctional relationships are those a product of colonization absolutely is it a, a necessity for us to not hinge upon just that but take the personal responsibility to change it ourselves absolutely how does that begin it begins by acknowledging that it exists and that's step one you know well on that note brothers um i want to continue this conversation absolutely. at some point love to Definitely. Let's not take two years because last time no. you said I'll be back. I think that was two years ago. That was not two years ago. That's I think it was. It was. We Mecca. Mecca. Well, Mecca hopefully I'll sure? still be around. Mecca. She's over here trying to get me canned. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't need me two seconds ago. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's how we get them back. I thought. Yeah, I thought I could rate. just reach out. All right, <laughs> yeah, so nah, I gotta go to Mecca. I'm all right with that. Bringing up old shit. I mean, I mean, man, you you one of them. Hold on to stuff. Type of people. Listen, never be in a relationship. I need you to. I need you to get over it. Yeah, Mecca doesn't hold a grudge. He nurtures it. Oh you know my God. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he feeds caresses it like warm milk. He, he caresses it. He feeds it warm milk and cookies. Uh, yeah, just, he oh. breastfeeds his grudges. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Green diet, oh, clean eating. Oh man, his, his <laughs> uh, grudges are, are, are vegan. All right, so thank you. Let me thank, thank everybody you. for being God here. Thank you, Southpaw. Nice you. to, thank nice you. to meet thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Jossie, thanks for using your, your um, power skills because it was actually Jossie that reached out to me and made sure that everything would come through. Mac appreciate you love you as well we'll, we'll see yeah all right fine. <laughs> I hope and so. of course we'll immortal technique and i like want to give praises to immortal technique senior because he apparently uh oh, did some good, good stuff good man yeah all when right. the album comes out we'll make it a point to bring him back all right i got it now on tape all right yeah all right 100%. thank no you brothers thank hey this is thank the you. this is the hub guys i appreciate you goodbye